Reconciliation. Reconciliation. Reconciliation is a process of coming together. That's working through our differences. To build a shared future. Reconciliation is about making our communities, our province, ourselves, stronger and prouder. Reconciliation can start in our homes, in our schools, at work, at work. But we know it starts in our heart. Reconciliation starts with all of us. Where will you start? Uh, a number of years ago, I found myself in Carnegie Hall, uh, and behind me on stage left was a beautiful grand piano, and Mary Ellen Chappell played a beautiful canon, uh, Packet Bell's canon in D. And because I came from a reserve that was one of the meanest, craziest, wildest, drinkingest, happiest, fun-lovingest, ball-playingest, hockey res playing uh, have I said baddest yet? Uh, First Nation community, I had no musical talent whatsoever, so I was panicking. What am I going to do in Carnegie Hall? And so I went to the middle of the stage, and I put up my hand and defined and said, free Leonard Peltier. And so that was, my, that was my first act of resilience because with today's security codes, I would have been on a watch system somewhere at that time. I was some, some terrorist. But anyways, so here we are. We're going to talk about resilience. Um, Andrew Solomon in his book, Far From the Tree, wrote about the fact that his mother uh, taught him how to read. And he suffered from dyslexia. And he understood that this issue was going to be a lifelong disability. And his, and his mother thought, realized this also. And she worked very hard so that he could learn how to read, so that he would not have a, a life of disadvantage. And, he be, and when, he, when he looked back on this experience with his mother and realized that she, like many parents or other teachers, realized that their, worth, their personal worth, by doing what they thought was impossible or doing something that they thought was impossible, enriched their lives. And that they, too, had formed a sense of resilience, that they understood that we, may, we have beliefs in our capabilities, but sometimes when we're, at, we're up at adversities, we have to find ways to go beyond ourselves. And he says that was a form of resilience. Now, for me today, and I have my good friend here, Lindsay, we're going to talk about an issue regarding where we have to bring resilience out. I represent a, a community, First Nation community. We all represent ourselves as treaty people. We all know that we've made a slogan very much alive in Saskatchewan that we're all treaty people, that the treaty relationship is just not for First Nations people, but it's all for people, all people that come to Canada are, are treaty people. But unfortunately, that relationship has been fractured because of the Indian Act. We all know about the Indian Act where it was basically designed to take the Indian on the child. And we're going through this whole question of reconciliation. Well, as a teacher, I went across Canada a number of years ago to look at a national review of how we teach First Nation children on reserve. And we know, that, we know the stats. And unfortunately, of course, the teachers that are up against the issue of bringing, bringing the values or bringing the ideas and the gifts that these little children have in First Nation communities is a difficult one. And we talk about resilience. We talk about resilient society. It takes resilient individuals. And unfortunately, the issue of poverty is an external one. And so a lot of these First Nation children are faced inside these, this abject poverty and don't have the ability to be who they are. They've lost language, lost their cultural, lost their spiritual issues. So it takes this very special teacher who goes beyond themselves to bring this out. And we're seeing that in every day. We're seeing it in many, in many instances. But the issue of resilience inside First Nation community, in my view, is a question of love. We need to have people, especially young children, to understand that they are loved. And that the, the ability that they have inside of them can come out in, their, in our world and make us even stronger. A sense of resilience is basically understanding we, have a, we can have a society with everybody included in it. And when we have that, we will have a resilient society. In Saskatchewan and Canada, we need to make sure that every First Nation child has the right to education, has every right and opportunity to participate in this beautiful dream and vision of being Canadian. And so resilience, in my mind, is this issue that Solomon writes about, which is, you know, it's a, it's a science, because we have to learn how to teach, we have to learn how to be parents, all these things that, that, are, that are not innate. But at the same time, it, it is an art. We see brilliant teachers all the time. We see brilliant educators, innovators, who are able to go into a classroom and bring the best out in the child. This is important for me as an educator. It's important for me as a treaty commissioner because I believe every First Nation child has this opportunity inside of them. We just need resilient teachers to bring out the resilience in First Nation children so they can compete and be buoyant in the world that's around them. Now, the reason why Lindsay's here. I just met Lindsay. I know Lindsay. Uh, Lindsay's... Uh, Parents, I know her grandfather, David, David Knight, who was the former chief of the FSI in the 60s. She's from Muscaday. But she's, one of the most resilient issues I think we need to talk about, of course, is this issue of missing, murdered, and I have to say, harmed First Nation women. This is an important issue for all of us as Canadians. And so I'm going to pass this over to Lindsay. She's going to do what she does, which is normal in my sense. She's going to go what I believe 
We have to go where the children are. We have to go where our First Nation communities are. We can't expect them to come to us. Go where they are. She's going to use her song to where our children are, to where women are, using a medium, which I think is where our young people are at. Lindsay, over to you. It's time for you to listen for a minute. Because this is where I share bits and pieces of my truth, what I know and don't know about this life. It's time to think back, to remember who we were, whoever that may be. Take back what we dream and say what we mean. I want to know more. I've got to know more. But I always feel like these obstacles are stopping me. It could be that I'm trying not to see, creating diversions convenient to me, running away, hurting my people, my family, those most important to me. Well, I can't do that anymore because I'm getting into experience and lessons, and I'm stopping the cycle and sending the message, and I'm trying every day I walk this earth to stay away from what's bad for me. And the only way I can do that is by recognizing the strengths that we have. We've got power in numbers. We've got power in spirit. I've got power in music. I've got power in my voice. Hear it. Holding hands of the old ones while moving forward. Beyond surviving, thriving, hunting, gathering, moving forward. Rebuilding nations. Rebalancing, not replacing. Maintaining resilience with this reconciliation. You and me and everybody, it's time to feel this shift as we reignite ancestral coexistence. Feel the shift as we remain and regain control again and feel that shift, monumental movement, continental lift, massive changes, who's been? Feel that shift as we rise with fists and sing this, let's sing this. I'm so over myself and all the distraction to connect land and people by my positive actions like keeping my body clean and free of chemicals, exercise on being independent but dependable, a healthy mind is a powerful tool, use a lesson ceremonial school, build out the nation by starting with you, don't let haters wear down, resolve, stay true. And through this, we talk back and we move forward while we have these words, the music, the art, the literature, the social media outlets for sure. It's time for us to reclaim and rename and reconcile with this resilient way. I said it's time for us to reclaim, rename, and reconcile with this resilient way. Hi, hi. Lindsay, Lindsay. Reconciliation. Reconciliation. Reconciliation is a process of coming together. It's about creating opportunities for us all. Reconciliation is about exploring the past and choosing to make a better future. It's understanding each other and building trust. Reconciliation is more than a word. It's a handshake. It's healing. It's celebrating our differences and recognizing we're all in this together. Reconciliation. What does it mean to you?